Hello chaps, welcome again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As ever, I do hope you're well. Now, today we're going to talk about playing to chords which aren't there. Uh, what I mean by that is, if you are the only guitarist in the band, if you are the only source of chords, then as soon as you stop playing the chords to start playing your lead break, then those chords aren't there. All you've got is bass and drums to play over. Now, if you've got a really good bass player who can fill things out in terms of uh, the harmony going on underneath, then that's uh, always a bonus. But in my experience, you can't always rely upon that. So, the technique I'm going to show you today is how you can use your lead break to essentially describe the chord sequence that's going on or would be going on underneath. So the chord sequence I'm going to uh, use for this example goes like this. It's a G chord going to A minor to D then C then G again then B minor then F then D taking us back to G so it's a bit like uh, this kind of thing. So a fairly standard kind of uh, country rock-ish ballad type chord sequence. And the way that you um, articulate those chords in terms of your lead guitar playing is, well the way I do it, is just by playing to the pentatonics. So for the G major chord, when that would be there, I will play the G major pentatonic. The A minor chord comes along, I will play the A minor pentatonic. D major chord, I'll go up to the D major pentatonic. The C major chord, C major pentatonic, which is the same thing as the A minor pentatonic. Hopefully you know that. Uh, G major chord comes along again, I'll either go back to the open position thing that you saw earlier, or I'll come up here to the 12th fret version of it. B minor pentatonic, well we've seen this already in the guise of the D major pentatonic, same notes. F major pentatonic And then back to the D major pentatonic again that we have seen twice already. And yeah, there's a lot of moving around involved in that, but it's possible to string a um, reasonably coherent solo together out of all of that, as I shall now demonstrate. Now that example there represents pretty much the worst case scenario in terms of what your bass player is doing because all the bass was doing on that was root notes, this kind of thing. Um, 
if your bass player has a little bit more uh, sophistication shall we say then they might be able to play an arpeggio or something underneath your chords to again kind of help give it that sense of direction that the chord sequence gives a piece of music maybe okay I got the chords the wrong way around there but you you get the kind of thing I'm talking about um, but even with just the root notes there, just following the chord sequence, or what the chords would be, um, with pentatonic scales, gives a quite effective result. You still get that same sense of movement and momentum that the chord sequence will kind of give to a piece of music. Um, if, by the way, you need some help with your pentatonic scale knowledge, then there is another video uh, that I've done for that, which you'll find the link in the description below this one. Um, now, as I mentioned earlier, one of the things that, um, one of the disadvantages of that way of playing is that there's a lot of movement involved. So, with a little bit more advanced knowledge of pentatonics, what you can do is essentially stay in the same place. Um, so in this next example I'm going to play exactly the same ideas uh, just G major pentatonic over the G chord, A minor pentatonic over the A minor chord and so on but I'm going to stay roughly round this area of the neck, the middle of the neck, round about the 5th fret um, and the way I'll do that is I've got G major pentatonic uh, using this shape A minor pentatonic using the ship. D major pentatonic using the ship. C major pentatonic using this ship. G major is not the same as before, um, starting, well there's the root note there. Maybe go down that, that root note there at the 3rd fret. B minor pentatonic, we've seen this already, it's the same as D major and I can get that shape here. F major pentatonic, uh, I can play using this shape. There it is. And D major pentatonic, well we've seen it already. Uh. There it is there. Um, as I say, if you're not certain about uh, how to locate pentatonic scales on the neck like that just take a look at the other video where I've um, dealt with that with that issue in some depth um, right so let's have a listen to what that sounds like if I um, just stay on the same part of the neck and uh, use those different patterns to play the pentatonic scales <laughs>
I think you can see and hear that that sounds a, and looks and feels actually a lot more uh, cohesive as a whole. It doesn't sound like I'm sort of doing a lick here, stopping, then starting up and doing another lick here and, and that kind of thing. It just sounds more joined up, I guess, is the, uh, the best way of describing it. Um, okay, that's pretty much it for today. Um, as I say, check out the other video if you need some help with locating pentatonic scales and you know the a little bit of the theory behind them and um, I'll just kind of mention at this point as well that um, this method of uh, following the chord sequence with a pentatonic scale works brilliantly if the chords are there as well um, it's a great way of getting into um, more of a responsive uh, way of playing where you're actually um, playing to the chord changes which is a good way of getting into that whole world of, of jazz playing should that be uh, something that you're interested in um, right that's it for today folks if you've enjoyed this video please hit the subscribe button that way you'll get to see more of them and if you would like some tailored one-to-one -one guitar tuition uh, get in touch with me via the details at the end of this video I do lessons via Skype wherever you are in the world or you can come along in person if you live on Teesside in the northeast of England and either way your first lesson will be free also, one final thing, I have a couple of albums out at the moment, uh, Handles for Forks and The Whiskey Made Me Do It, both of which are absolutely chock full of melodic, tuneful, shreddy, bluesy, rock instrumental guitar playing. What's not to like there? Um, oh, both these albums are available on uh, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, all the usual places, and as ever, the link is shown below this video. Right, that's it for now, folks. See you all again next time. Bye for now.